Hello and welcome to the Blue House Bull Session. We are happy to be back here with you on another lovely Tuesday, even if this Tuesday is a Wednesday, as most of them are. Uh, joined once again by my dearest friend, Uber Fuzzy, who is also dying from the heat. The Midwest is under a merciless attack from the sun, and I say we fight back and blow it up. I, I would rather live in an era of darkness where, where nothing can thrive than deal with this for very much longer. And I know it's my own fault. Mm-hmm. It's, it's my own fault. I have not gotten the air conditioning fixed in a decade, decade and a half. Nearly 20 years at this point, huh? Yeah. It's on my list. I'll get there when I get there. There's only one summer a year, and it only lasts like nine months. You know, I can deal with it. I can just put on more layers if I get too hot. That's how that works, right? Literally, summertime, right now, th- this exact case is the only thing that made me consider, like, like weeks and weeks ago, I had thought about, like, hey... I should go set up like a VTuber or just a, a static PNG tuber, just just something. Yeah. For times like this, when you're like, I want to be online streaming. But I don't want anyone and, to watch yeah, me sweat. Yeah. Like, I put on a tank top, otherwise I would be sitting here not. This poor fellow. I realized fella, I could just turn the camera off. This poor fellow, let me tell you. I had a guy come to the door today, door to door. I, I don't want to say solicitor. Oh, the the oh, energy man. companies when they do all their like mm-hmm. jiggery pokery, mm-hmm. and he wanted to come in and make sure I've got the best plan. And I don't want to stand out in the sun and talk to him, but I don't want to be a dick about it either. But he's yeah. drenched. He looks like he's been actively swimming. So, you know, I, I tell him, hey, I I can't really help you right now. Sorry, I don't no hablo inglés. But at the same time, I'm like. You need a water here. I'm sorry. This is not cold, but at least it's wet. If you're out here, stay hydrated, please, dude, for your own sake. And the was look it sunny out. Yes. Oh, OK. Yes. No, it, it still is here as far as I can tell. I, I, I came downstairs at like. I woke up. Seven or eight took a cold shower came downstairs and I haven't left until yeah I am now more motivated than ever to get the basement cleaned back out I want to reclaim it because that's where all the cold air goes to live maybe I'll make that I my plan you, that is also where the humid air goes uh, that's true the moisture would go down but you get one of these which you honestly, you probably should for that basement, anyways. I thought that was your computer case. <laughs> no, that's a dehumidifier. I know, but I love that that honeycomb design on the front of it. It would make a really cool computer case, except for all the that's humidity the, that it stores. That's the back. That's where the filter is. You 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 wouldn't want to put all your parts directly in the moisture pulled from the air unfiltered. Well, no, because I it's it's not like distilled. A dehumidifier is just a condenser. It's going to pull all the filtrate out of the air too, and and you would have a pile of grossness. Like you wouldn't drink the water out of your dehumidifier. I would hope you wouldn't drink the water out of your dehumidifier. Okay. Last year, when the basement flooded, and there, there's reason to get that. Okay, and before I had the tube. Before I got the adapter in the tube, I was having to carry a 40 liter bucket up the stairs to go dump it out manually because it. I have a tendency to get to over prepare for something. I'll buy the bigger model because why get exactly the right, you know, level? I'll buy the bigger one. Tubes. So I bought apparently one that is rated to. Did you? To like dehumidify like an entire gymnasium. The square footage this thing is designed for is like 25,000 square feet. This is meant for you put one of these in a building. 
This is the big boy one, not the one you put in a house. So it is very good. It will drop the humidity very fast. Hmm. Like I said, it's got a 40 liter bucket in the bottom of it. That's as much as 22 40, 40, liters. Well, 40 quart. It, it's a lot. It's it's basically the, the half the volume of that damn thing. It's just the bucket in the bottom of it. Yeah. But it's got a hose adapter, too. But you need a. I thought you needed a weird adapter. Apparently, no. This one has got a standard NPT garden hose thread. Two weeks of trying to find the right thing. And eventually I get I email the company. And they're like, no, it's 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 a normal, normal NPT thread. Just put a garden hose on it. And I'm like. Oh my god! Oh, well, in that case, so yeah, it's got a. I've got a tube stretched over there to where the the sump hole is. So, but yes, it even down here in this basement right now, it is eighty two degrees Fahrenheit and seventy percent humidity. Yeah, my thermostat says eighty eight and has been climbing steadily today. It is. It is not a comfortable temperature. So it goes. And I'm in the basement, and I'm in the basement though. Yeah, the humidity is less upstairs, but it's easily ninety. This weather, this weather. We only got three months left to complain about it though, and then it'll be too cold again, right? That's how Ohio works. The the Midwest in general, we we approach our weather as an opponent. Yeah. Ah. Anywho. Did you see the Nintendo Direct? No. Me neither. I've heard some things, I... but I'm operating on conjecture. I haven't seen the hard evidence myself, honestly. I, as I was trolling TikTok this morning on the toilet, as one does, I saw a few people coming. I saw the Zelda thing. <laughs> I saw the Zelda thing last night. I heard no, zero mission. No, we're not a react. You know, it's it's short though, right? Isn't it short? What? Let me oh, go look. It was, it was a while. Where's where's the where's the YouTube? Forty two fifty four. Yeah, that's not short. Never mind. I'll tell you what. We'll 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 cut together. We'll cut together our reactions. We'll do that this week or this weekend. Do you want it? Yeah, we can do that. Do it like a. Put us in the quarter and do it like a fast forward thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, by the way, it is now June 19th and this is episode 17. I am I am teleporting us into the future in the text crawler. <laughs> I did not have the capacity to go through my checklist. I am in like low power mode to avoid overheating. No, no. Talk about it. I have no short-term memory whatsoever, and I'm going to assume you're lying until I see it for myself. So you can say okay. whatever you Here, want about it. Here's here's what I did see. Here's the things I know. They announced a new Zelda game with Zelda. Something, something, try wand, courage, something. I don't know. There's a new Mario Party, which, dear God, listen to me, Nintendo. Whatever you have written... Make it not be Mario Party 8 in all the horribleness. Listen to everybody. <laughs> Listen to the thousands upon millions of people and the vitriol about that game. We know how the games work. We've played it before. Don't show us a five-minute tutorial with a thousand dialogues every time we start the game new. Now I, it'll I, be fine. I will say I did hear that, and I did hear that from more than one person, that the new Zelda game has echoes in the name. Right mm -hmm. after we did a marathon last summer called Zeldathon Echoes. I think the reason they're doing that is it's going to be like, I think they're going to be like rehashing chunks of old games. And that's why it's like memories of, or like in. It's going to be parts of old games. Yes, but we so can't. Yeah, I, I know. I, I, I want to say we can't, but the more I think about it, can can we? Can we reuse Echoes as a marathon name? Echo, echoes, echoes, of echoes, echoes of Echoes. Yes, Zeldathon. Echoes of Echoes. 
after 1986 is going to be echoes of echoes here you heard it here first um uh, uh big big leaker right here rivaling only jiggy 11 you know and the mario party is going to have online support up to 20 people which is going to be which means they've got this shit worked out that... i think this i think this one's going to be made by new nintendo and not older old Japanese businessmen that don't know anything about video games Nintendo. That I could get into. That I could absolutely get into. And the, and the big thing I did see is the Metroid Prime 4 thing. They said it looks so good because it's not going to be on Switch. It's going to be on Switch 2. Electric Boogaloo. Yes. So, yeah. But that that's literally the only only launch titles I've seen for it. We're we're or, that's the only thing out of the direct I saw. Prime four, we are now getting to like Duke Nukem levels of wait time though. I trust that it will happen. I do trust that it will happen. But Oh it will. I I, I think it's gonna be the big leading launch title. Yeah. I really do. I think it's gonna be it's gonna be like Halo three on the They're not gonna launch with the Mario for the well, they're gonna have them. They're going to have they're going to have a. Well, no, I think the Mario Party, the new Mario Party is going to be one they're going to carry for forward for a while, but it's not going to be like Mario Kart where they were rehashing Mario Kart eight for the sixth time. Because they, they need a party game, they have to have a party game, they need something for the kids and for the family to get people in there. They'll say, look, that's backward if it's backwards compatible. All they need is a couple good key launch titles, and you're fine. Well, it, I'm I'm thinking in terms of like, is the system going to launch with a Mario, and what is it going to be? I don't think it'll launch with a Mario. I do, I really don't think they will. Would this be the first time? The thing is, they just they're they're just putting out Mario and Luigi now. They just had Super Mario talking fire flower fucker thing, whatever that was. Wonder. Super, Mar Super Mario Wonder. Wonder. New new Super Mario Deluxe Wonder 2 Switch Edition. Hyper Alpha Nintendo's got a bad, yeah. Nintendo's naming scheme is only rivaled by Apple. Um, There's condensation on my mouse pad and it makes me sad. I I need to get another one of these mouse pads. One of my friends at one you point can in time wash them. At one point you in can time put them in the washing machine. I had a dye sublimation printer, but I did not use it. It just chilled at my house. It it held the <laughs> table down. It was like a table weight. And I put it in the hands of someone who was getting into cricket heat transfer crafting all that stuff along with a bunch of blank supplies. And I asked very nicely when Dimensions was announced, there was a really nice piece of art. And I snagged that background and I asked my friend if she would make a mouse pad for me with the Dimensions art. And it is hands down the best mouse pad I've ever owned. It's gorgeous. I, I, it, I, I love it. But yes, now I need to wash it. Well, if it was actually home printed, if, if if it was home printed, like even just even sublimated, not washing machine I would wash. Be... No, I'm gonna. No, no, no. Yeah, but I'm like, I'm going I've to gently this... rinse it in the bathroom sink and then pat it dry. I just want the dust to be evened out and level, so the whole thing looks uniform. I've got a really nice Corsair one over here that they that Best Buy had mistakenly put on sale for like twelve dollars or something. Ooh. Fancy. Like I think somebody somebody marked it was it was like forty or fifty bucks. It's like a full desk size what is that? Three foot by one foot ish. Like a full desk. But they had pad, marked yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but Best Buy had like applied the wrong sale percentage or something but it was like in store only and there's one near me and our friend james went up there and like hey i'm gonna go get one of these you want to go to best buy with me yours is the closest 
and I went with them and I went up a few days later and I went and bought one and it's served me well, but it needs a washing. So back to the I... direct. Sorry, I completely lost my train of thought there. <laughs> yeah. Zero mission coming to NSO. It wasn't. It wasn't. Fusion was zero mission wasn't. I'm pretty sure. Okay. But now the best starter Metroid, I, I will agree with Ganon on that. The best starter Metroid, Zero Mission, is, is much more accessible to people, and that makes me very, very happy. Every game that was announced, let's see. Echoes of Wisdom, cool. Metroid 4, cool. Mario and Brother, Mario and Luigi, yeah, yeah. That looks good. Uh, more Donkey Kong. I am hyped about the Dragon Quest 1 and 2, especially specifically 1 and 2. 3 can go fuck off a cliff. It's just a bad game. Like, the story is bad. 1 and 2 were great. Um, Brothership? Hang on. Hang on. I, I, you I didn't know see I, this? No, I didn't. <gasps> yeah, it's, it's totally... It's Mario and Luigi, just like the old one. Just like the old... Brothership. Like the one you made comic... Yeah. They high five at some point and now their hands are glowing. So they, it's like a whole combo tactics thing. You know, there's it's, already it's... a word for that. It's called brotherhood. No. It's basically Sonic and Tails. Where you can do stuff with the other character. You can, like, where you can throw the other one stuff. down to sacrifice them to get past the level because nobody likes the other one. Tee hee, yeah. I'm funny. Oh, because it's a boat. I see what's going on here. Well, well. I am very intrigued about the Nintendo, the Nintendo Sports, because Wii Sports was great. I really, I feel weird because it seems like they're they for a long time there. Like they wanted switch was all about like the motion controllers and doing stuff. And occasionally they'll have a game that's like, like uh Mario wonder. Yeah. They show an ad. They, they oh, I can't remember which comedian like he's playing father, daddy, daughter time. And they're playing the game and they're doing like the punch. Like you take the controller and you punch up to do the thing. Like it's like pick a lane. Either you are a motion based system or you're not. And it seems only Nintendo, very, very for Nintendo first party games ever really make use of motion controls. Everybody else is like, this is just a console. OK, I'll give I, 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 I will push back against that and I will use the Wii as my justification for it, because with the Wii, there was a lot of tacked on motion control that didn't need it. I don't mind if they want to make use of it where it fits. And only there. The problem they have is that they have the 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 problem is the switch light. With the Wii, you had the controls in your hand. You had to have them. That was you always had the controls in your hand. They had degrees of rotation all the time. You could not use them, but it wasn't like like the Wii U where they were attached to it and the whole thing had a thing. But the fact that the switch light exists means you have to sort of support some access in case you need to tilt the whole device, but you can't always know if they have two directional things. Mm. Mm. Because you can't play a game where you, you can't play a Maracas game with a switch light because you only have one motion in you only have one tilt control you don't have two that, like they box themselves in this weird case of they are three different systems they have to account for that is going to make the design of metroid pinball 2 a little bit tougher Oh, 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 and Four Swords came to NSO as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I'm already messaging people about things. I don't think they'll go anywhere, but I'm already messaging people about things. I think they had to do that. I think that's why they find it. I, this is entirely, this is not, I do not know anything. This is entirely my headcanon. Okay, the time it takes to get stuff into NSO, because they do have to kind of rebuild it with all the hooks and all the stuff. It's not just a packaged emulator. Yeah. It's got to support the rewind and all the stuff. Like, it takes a little while to do that. I think Four Swords was, because remember, they just shut down the, the servers for that with all that. I wonder if... That was, that was the, Triforce that, Heroes, and that one's not yet. Okay. Okay, so it's Triforce. Okay, wrong one then. Yeah. It, multiple characters on the screen as Zelda game. I don't know. The only reason yeah. I know the difference is I got asked some questions I can't go into more detail about as much as I'm the number one leaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. But I, I, Four Swords I'm, now, so... Yeah, I know you know. I have to tell the audience, too. <laughs> well, it's also interesting that it is listed as Link to the Pass with, with Four Swords. Yes. Which is different than the original Four Swords Adventure. Link to the Past with Four Swords was the DSiWare one. Yeah. So they had it in a shape where they had made it more portable in the first place. And that means mm -hmm. maybe, 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 maybe they'll bring Zelda Picross out. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I'm saying, Ganon. Like, it, it's not Four Swords Adventure. It's the It's the... Four Swords mechanic tacked onto Link to the Past. Yeah. Yeah. E either way, it coming to NSO means it's actually properly supported, which also means multiplayer non-locally. I can only hope... Now there's... I know this is not the case. I can only hope that they screwed up and forgot to disable save states and rewind for that. Play in multiplayer, trying to keep everyone in... in, in, in sync with each other well, and then just because it's on do, just because it's through and so doesn't mean it has to have that i think some of the other multi the games that are multiplayer don't have rewind and save states i know but i can always secretly hope yeah but yeah, yeah um look at this list i'm pretty lots of lots of good stuff i know you are a dorakue fan so <laughs> it is it is coming. Take your take your national holiday. <laughs> oh. Um Yeah, I I Yeah, looking at the I'm looking at IGN's cover. Oh man. Are they yeah. are they are they bringing Bellatro to the Switch? Asking for a friend. A friend who's got like 48 hours of playtime in Bellatro. In the past like three days. Oh man. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't anymore. I love that game and there's I can't. No, there's only one gameplay screenshot of the Dragon Quest 1-2 in here. It's literally only one shot of gameplay. But it's the HD 2D like oh man that's i'm gonna play the hell out of that i i very accurately describe and i'm sure i'm not the first and i won't be the last velatro as poker the gathering you you oh yeah modify your deck between hands and everything you have enchantments they just call them jokers and seals and all of that and there's so much collecting to do there's so much collecting to do um, this is why I joked weeks and weeks and weeks ago. When are we making a deck builder game? This is why is they get playtime. People like them. You have ever you have a built in. The fact that a deck builder exists means you have replayability because you have collectability, which means custom. You have different runs. You have a reason to replay the game over and over and over and over. Yes, How but when long... I said Bellatro with Mahjong tiles, you crapped on the idea. <laughs> and I don't yes. mean Mahjong Solitaire. I mean little old Chinese lady mafia Mahjong. You know, the gambling yes. kind. That, but Bellatro. 
I want that. I want tiles. I want to go pong. I want to go kung. You know, I, that's what I want. <laughs> to feed the little old Chinese lady that lives in my heart, you know. Also, congratulations, Red. Awesome. I'm glad you got it working, and I'm excited to see what you start streaming on Switch. You know what? Let's throw you a shout-out while I'm sitting here. Uh, Red Stephanie has been uh, streaming gaming recently, and she is absolutely a fantastic human being, one of my dearest friends. Hey, Red. Hey, Red. Hey, Red. When are you going to be on the show? Huh? Huh? Yeah? <laughs> Come on. Come on. You can do it. We will do that. We will absolutely do that. Soon, soon, you'll be able to just hit join call right there. We'll be able to bring in guest callers. Do we okay? Do we want to talk about the the Twitch accidental launch of that and their their you clusterfuck? Know, you know, let's do because I have burned through a handful of bits. I I bought bits a while ago and I've been. Oh no no not not power ups. Oh that that that's a whole kind. Oh no. the API thing. Oh yes yes we do. Oh okay. yes we do. Okay, back in okay Twitch does a monthly town hall thing called patch notes it's like the first wednesday of the month ish i think see the first wednesday it's a wednesday once a month i don't remember what the date is see the first or last wednesday back in the one in may dan clancy was talking about it's one of the one of the questions somebody wrote in is like hey stream together is great for discovery stuff i you know are you guys going to do anything to like help fix it up, get it used more and stuff. And he said, yes, coming soon, we're going to have a way where you can just like, somebody can like have an open call type thing and not open, but like available. And you'll be able to just, and he, his words knock on the door and join and join the call. And like, Hey, I want to get a, just like a caller on a radio show. The big difference is right now to invite somebody in. It's all street. I had, I had explained this in a Reddit thread. Yeah, because for whatever reason, I got involved in the, the Twitch subreddit and people were like, yeah, 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 just being dumb. And I'm like, no, there's no difference. They're just making it. They're taking it from being streamer initiated. If you wanted to add right right now, you have to stop what you're doing. Go find their name, get an invite link sent, like invite them and do all this stuff and then get them in there and approve them. Maybe in coordinate like, hey, can I join? I want I know about this or whatever. Right. If versus hey i can help you get through this game do you want me to walk you through it yes they click join you click approve that's it yep and then you're like well what about discord i'm like not everybody has discord everybody has literally you're watching it on whatever device that's twitch is supported stream together works on if you're watching a browser it works in a browser if you're watching on the on the app it works through the app you don't have to coordinate getting another voice. You just click join and it's all done through the one browser session. Like that's it. It's that easy. So all they're doing is taking this, the setup off of the streamer to get a guest caller on without having to like coordinate all this stuff. That's it. And it's, it's going to lead to bigger adoption. But the problem is, I'll let you, because you're you're the one that was telling me about it. You have a better understanding of how it soft sideways launched. Somebody at Twitch messed up and deployed something, and it suddenly showed up in a bunch of people's sidebars. If anybody was using Stream Together, or they just or they didn't have the, per I think it was for some. For one phase of it, it was anybody who was actively using Stream Together. When you moused over it, there was a call button. And then for another set of people, which means they probably rolled it back in a different a different part, was anybody who was streaming at all had a call button only on the left sidebar. Only when you moused over it, you couldn't click on it. But if you tabbed, like tab targeted through all your links, you could get to it and push enter. And it would attempt to send something smart people discovered in the in the browser console that like it was returning an error not not allowed blah 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 because it wasn't launched but you could send it so somebody messed up and accidentally added it to the ui or deployed it or Ooh. enabled it site-wide and then it went away a few hours later but just the way people freak out when stuff appears which to be fair 
Twitch has got a bad record of this with the power ups. That caught me off guard because I was actively streaming when that went live. Yeah. And you did a thing in my chat mm -hmm. and none of the stuff that was on the page had any idea what to do with that data until I reloaded the dashboard. I, I couldn't even see any of it. And apparently some of it wasn't even rendering because it only was being, you could buy it, but it wasn't being applied to a session in progress. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm sure that the bits went through and everything for that still. That's, oh, yeah. that's another one that people really got up in arms about like immediately is do these bits still go to the streamer or is this just a way yes. for Twitch to eat it's, the bits? It's just fancy cheering. They just built in effects that people were doing with other systems, just like with alerts. They built their own alert system and it's just This is native. All it is, is it's bit cheering with effects bit built in but so you don't have to have stream elements that like when you buy exactly 57 bits this thing goes off or when you buy exactly 63 bits this goes off but if you weren't they watching patch notes if you didn't watch the patch notes there was no telegraphing of that information okay to anybody anybody at all if you stream have this the dashboard up the streamer dashboard dashboard.twitch.tv have that up in a thing whole bunch of useful shit including when your ads are going to go off you can't say you don't know when your ads going to go off there's a little bar that moves <laughs> but up in the corner there's a little sparkle thing the little ai sparkle it lights up when there's new shit creator updates oh look here it's everything going back hold on i'm still scrolling i'm still scrolling back to december 2020 every creator update uh, now, remember I said the other day, like, I wish they'd put this stuff in one place. They do. It's right there. It like When you get a little notification there, read it. There's a link. Learn more. It takes you to help.twitch.tv where they explain every single thing that people were like, I don't know what this is. I, want, I just want to turn it off. I want to turn it off. Like, you can't turn it off. I just want to turn it off. I don't, I don't know what this does. It shows you right there. It shows you what the viewers see. I was watching people that came back after that. They were on vacation when it happened, when power-ups went live. They did not know what that dote were. They, one guy like was freaking out because he didn't know what was going on. And he literally hit end stream until he could figure it out. He didn't like, people were like, it's right there. Just go read the thing. That's, wh that's what's happening. Because he just saw the bits coming. He's like, I don't know what this, I want to turn it off. And just stopped his stream for like 30 minutes. He came and like, okay, I think I have it all turned off. And he just set the price to like $99. He's like, oh, I don't want that. And I'm like, it doesn't affect you. I, I understand from our point of view, it doesn't impede someone. But if someone decides they really don't like it, I, I do want them to have the ability to disable it in some way. Whether they make it, you know, $99 or whatever. To, to make to, to put an impediment in the way of the things that they don't like that they feel takes away from the experience. The one the one thing I will say, they incor Twitch incorrectly implemented part of this. One of the three power ups you can set timeout things on, just like you can with channel points, where you can like only you only a person can only do it once per stream or at max three people, or there's like a 30 minute timeout, but the other two don't. The only one that you can set timeouts on is the particle effect one that goes over the video. Yeah. That apparently does stay in your VOD. That is not a client side thing that goes into the video. So some people are like, I want to be able to turn that one off in case I am recording content that I'm putting other places. I'm, I pull down the VOD and I cut up for things yeah. that may obscure things. I can understand that if they implement it the way the alerts do where it goes over top of it mm -hmm. and it only, if it only works as you're actively viewing it, it'd be perfectly fine. So I will give you that they did that one wrong and there is no way to turn it off. And also these cost bits, which are actual money. They put, they tacked them in the channel points manager. Mm hmm which they did rename to channel points and power-ups, but that whole interface was only points, which are not money. And now three of the options there are money. 
and it's it is it if you recognize oh that's that's the bit logo but chances are there's a whole bunch of streamers that only stream it's just an output output platform they do not use twitch they do not go watch other things on twitch they are never a viewer they only see it as this is the place i'm broadcasting to so they don't know what the bit experience is like yeah Yeah. which i think is bullshit but it's like people that started someplace else and came they're like okay i just hit live and it goes like i don't know how twitch works like learn how twitch works You should know, you should have worked and know how to make a pizza before you manage a pizza shop. Yeah, you, you know, I, I don't know that I can agree with that. I, I, I'm interested to hear your reasoning, Gannon, but in my mind, the majority of people who are streamers at this point came in as a viewer. The viewer experience has changed, but something brought you to the platform. If you're, I mean, if you're a full-time streamer, maybe you're not using it a whole lot right now, but I would assume some level of familiarity. You have been a viewer. You may not be an active viewer. Okay, maybe I, maybe I can kind of see where you're coming from from that side of things. Hmm. The thing is, is I'm willing to, I'm willing to bet that that mentality where you are either a either or either you're only a creator but you don't use the platform comes from YouTube. Mm. Mm. Because most people who are a content creator that have to record and then edit and then publish and then upload stuff to YouTube are spending all their time either making or editing content. They do not yeah. generally have time to browse and watch other content on YouTube. Plus there's a whole like, Oh, I don't want to like accidentally steal like, Oh, that's, that's somebody else's stick, you know, <laughs> which is a thing. It, it is. It's true. It is. But streamers are so it's an ephemeral thing where you are like, I can't be watching generally somebody else's Twitch stream while I'm streaming. It's very ironic to hear you say that, but I understand it to be a pretty universal truth. There, there are right. some notable exceptions. He's got two streams going in the background, one coming in on each stereo channel while he's streaming all the time, all the time. <laughs> he's probably watching Jiggy as we're here talking, honestly. Me? No. No. I I do have I do have No, for the podcast I don't. When I'm doing other stuff, yeah, I usually have somebody else. And yes, I have a, a I have a browser extension that I can take a tab and say, all audio coming out of this this tab, put it on the right channel or left channel or whatever. So I can have Yes, I will it's, listen to two different It's next generation. I will listen to two different audio streams. Yeah, it's TNG while I'm playing a game that's coming through data yeah. listening to nine things at the same time because he can untangle them. It's we're, we're at that point now. That is what is going on here. OK, here. Here's the neat thing, though, because it does. It's not just I'm listening to three things, game and stream and stream. Because the game is coming in on both. If I get ads coming in this one, I can just go like this and not listen to those ads. And I can still hear the game and the other thing. Also, because I have three monitors, I put the thing that is in the right channel on the right screen. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I, I heard something. I can turn towards it. You're a madman. You know, you are an absolute madman. I hope you know that. I admire it. I envy it. But it doesn't make you any less I'm... of a madman. I'm also guilty of not while I'm streaming. I do not have that kind of brain space, but I am very, very guilty of watching three or four things at a time. And they all get some division of my attention, but I do my best to, you know, attend to what I can at least. There is a live show that I watch on Fridays 
news tech podcast thing. They started, they did not have their ads on on Twitch for the longest time. And then they realized they were losing out on a lot of money. So they turned ads on and they don't like do a, because it's just their recording for their, they are much like this. They are recording. They are happen to be streaming it, but they're mainly putting it out as a podcast, which I don't think I've ever actually listened to. I've only ever watched it live. Yeah. Or I go back and watch the YouTube video. So they don't pause. Like if ads happen to run, they don't even know because they don't even, they literally just do not give a fuck about Twitch. But they started running ads. They're also live streaming to YouTube because I think that's how, I think that's what they actually just cut and put up. But YouTube does occasionally run an ad. Right. I will, I'm not joking, have both versions open at the same time. So you're not, you don't have to listen to ads at any point? Split the audio. They, they're they usually within a few seconds sync, but I'll actively like listen. I won't be listening to YouTube, but I will listen to Twitch. As soon as Twitch runs an ad, I go like that. And I now I'm listening to the YouTube side. Terrifying. In a good and I'll way. Keep but... listening to the, I'll keep listening to the YouTube side until YouTube runs an ad. And then, and then I go back, back to Twitch. Yeah. yeah. What kind of Sometimes I do that when I'm watching escape. Hey, they're getting twice as much ad view, ad view out of me. I don't get. I don't have to listen to when the annoying ads play. I do that when I watch pirate software all the time. If I if I'm not currently subscribed to him, I'll do that and I'll just like, oh, ads run. I'll just flip to the YouTube feed. That is crafty and clever. I do like that. That is that is pretty ingenious. I can't it's not, deny it. It's ad avoidance, not ad blocking. That's yeah, true. And put my fingers in my ears and go la 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 la. You yeah, get your basically. revenue, but I don't have to listen to being told how much a truck will make me a real man. Or how smooth my skin will be if I eat past I have, fashion. I have a very unique problem with my ads. I live, I'm not going to dox myself, but I live in one community. Directly to the west of me is a fairly large city that's the main large cities in, in my county. They have a larger Spanish population. I I get that. Occasionally, the cable company just re-decides where my geolocation point is. And sometimes they correctly identify the city I'm in, which is a suburb on the one side. And sometimes the geolocation stuff resets and I get, I exit out of that other city. So um, the ads get targeted based on that city and I will get a whole bunch of Spanish ads. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's the, it's normal products. They're just, it's the Spanish version, just Spanish dubs over top of them or whatever. But I'm like, what, why am I hearing Spanish? Like, Oh, and I'll go and I'll check and I'll put in my IP and some geolocator thing. Like, Oh, you're currently in other biggest city and not where I actually live. And I'm like, okay, time Warner's messing up again. So, yeah. And it's compounded by the fact that we both end up on websites that are not in English anyway. So we have some browser thing that marks us as, hey, this person speaks a language that's not English. Well, it's not even that it's you can tell it's entirely geo targeted because they think and it's I figured out this only happens when that geo thing jumps when they've redone something and it hasn't said, Oh, you were actually in your city. You must be in this other city. Cause that's where the, e- they changed the egress point, but they didn't like re tag that traffic. Yeah. Here's an interesting fun fact to you. The ads that play in the podcast app in iOS, the native podcast one are, are inserted in when you download the episode. they can add there's there they can upload some podcast networks they say like oh play put ads at these spots this is where we're putting a break in the show you can put an ad in here yeah and they will do that and the apple system will put in ads there and they're with you know whatever network or like it's it's basically like you know the google ad like i think but they put them in in line in there they are inserted when you download them 
and where you download them. If I happen, if I happen to open my podcast app when I'm at your house and I'm ref and I'm downloading, you know, recent updates there, I get different ads inserted than if I open them at home. Because you're in a different location with a different demographic. Yeah. Yes. I get very different ads home that and I'm like, why is this? How do I get to like, why do I, the ads in this one podcast get very different? It's because they come out on Mondays and, that's and I get, when you're Hey, there's a new, dinner. Up, yeah. and I tap it and I open it and it starts downloading it at your house, which is very, which is just geographically different across a County line. I get very different ads whenever I list, I download it at your house. That's wild. That's awesome. But that's Be, wild. Because that used to happen to me when I used to travel for work. Right. You spent all that time out on when the I was in, coast. When I was in Colorado or I was in San Francisco, I noticed I was getting radical because you get regional ads too. That is wild. That is wild. Yeah. But they, they're they inserted when you download them. So if you take it like offline, like, oh, I go somewhere with Wi-Fi, I download all my podcasts and I go get on a plane. They're pre-inserted. They're not like live fed in. Yeah. They're downloading cached with the podcast Me, because I can also like go back and listen to a podcast that I downloaded weeks ago. And I'm like four weeks behind on a weekly show. I'm getting ads for an event that has already happened, which means it doesn't up. It literally caches them. They, in, were, they were baked into the audio file. Yeah. Whatever the audio equivalent of HLS is, it's basically how it works now. It's not one audio file. It's, a couple it's dozens of small yeah 30 second clips or whatever that's how they can index them and you can jump and chapter and stuff is it's not one two hour audio stream it's a bunch of little files that are just few sheets stapled together. back together at the end yeah as you're yep. as you're and that's all the ads yep man streaming's the way of the future that's going to be the way to do it huh that's why there used to be it used to be a whole lot easier to just download a YouTube video with a grabber because it was one file on a server you could get. And then they changed the word like you go to download and you only get a little chunk. It's because you're downloading the first chunk and a pointer to the next chunk. And that's how browsers like Netflix basically pioneered this. Yeah. Where they're like, oh, it's just like, oh, you're down. Your bandwidth is getting lower. They can switch. They can literally jump tracks. But the time code stayed the same. They can shift to a lower resolution. You can up and down resolution without rewinding or reloading the whole file. It's just like, oh, on the next one, go up to this. Yeah. And that is a really neat and handy feature for them to have. Like, unbelievably so. It also protects against encoding errors. Yeah. Because if an encoding error ever happens, the most it would trash is... Generally, HLS chunks are two seconds... But I think it, I think the maximum window is like five seconds, but it's not, oh, a whole, you know, block of this is broken. It's that one video file is corrupt. You blinked and it was gone. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine doing that at scale. Like, I, I admire that they can. And damn, I would not want to be responsible for that kind of stuff, though. I am not a video engineer. I have never managed a video streaming platform. I have no idea. Well, I, I know exactly why, but I have no reason for all of this knowledge to be <laughs> in. I don't even edit video. I literally have no way to edit. I, I needed to cut a chunk of a video out. And you know how I did it? I brought it up full screen. I propped up my phone. I literally recorded on my phone my computer monitor because the the built-in editor in iOS I can like crop a video. Yeah. So I just record took a video and I cropped it down and then ex saved that crop and sent that to somebody because I needed to show them exactly a certain little clip of something because I have no way to edit the full video on my on my computer. We're, I don't edit stuff. We're gonna have to. I fix know things that. about we'll HLS like, chunks. We'll, we'll we'll get you some form of editing software that's easy to do the things that you would do. Uh, Microsoft has a thing called ClipChamp. I accidentally, I right clicked on something. I was saving something in one of the new Windows 11 dialogs. 
and it was context aware. And I right clicked on something and I opened it's like, you want to open it in ClipChamp? And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck ClipChamp is. Why do I have something called ClipChamp that I don't know what it is on my computer? And it opened. It's like, oh, it's by Microsoft. Okay. That's why it's on my computer without my knowledge. I understand now. It was a GIF file. So it thought it was animated, even though it wasn't. Yeah. So it was trying to open it as edit frames and it, it wasn't. Fair. Fair. Speaking of Microsoft and things that shouldn't be on your computer, did you hear they're uh, acknowledging that maybe the uh, whole let's record everything you ever do? They're, they're, they're kind of rolling that back and seeing maybe that wasn't the best idea for right now. I like the idea, though. Right. The problem is applications need to support it. Yeah. They don't need to do that at the OS level until applications have a chance to support that in there. If they give time, like, hey, we're going to do this. It's coming out in a year. Get your shit ready. Here's the API for it. You can say, okay, you can record the screen, but not this text box. Yeah. You know, have a way for an API, like in the Windows API to say, okay, when my password manager is up, blank out that part of the screen. Don't record anything in here or don't record this part or whatever. Give apps a chance to build it into their programs. And that would be perfectly fine. Because the people would have time to either not use those things or anybody that's an active program, you shouldn't be using a brand software to have or give a way to say as a user, yes, I don't want you to record this program. This one specific thing. Don't record that. Record anything else. Sure. Yeah. I like this. System. I want you to be able to record this. Don't record this one. I know it's got private information in it. Or in general, this is a work computer. I'm going to have sensitive stuff. Don't do this on this machine. Yeah. There's... But they didn't. They just said, this is going on. Yeah. No good way to opt out. See, Android has the problem, a similar problem in reverse, in that there you, you can set flags in your application or even in just specific activities in your application uh, to disable screenshots. Security policy says no screenshots of this thing. Yeah. But there's no way to but... work around that. Like... I, I appreciate that they are attempting to protect me, but I want to be able to say, I know this is really dumb. I need this image. Well, you're also talking about Operson that didn't even have screenshots for however long. I don't know. It was a very long time. You could not take a screenshot. Like at all, it was fairly late in the game. Yeah, like I would, I would have to go back and look because I, it, it's been nearly a decade that they have. Yes, but I, I, I think it's been it was about that long ago. I remember I was in San Francisco. Somebody was like, "How do you take a screenshot?" And we're like, "Wait, how do you take a screenshot?" Like I know on my iOS, like I can go like that and do it. And we're trying to look it up, and they're like, "Oh, apparently you just can't. It doesn't exist." And so we took somebody else's phone and took a picture of their phone and sent it to them because he needed to take a picture of what was on his screen. It might yeah, have been was, tied to the model, too, or something like that. I'm not sure, but it was it was a long time ago, so it was weird on phones. Yeah. Yeah. In any case, I. I sometimes I need to do something bad and dumb, and sometimes I want to be able to do it. I will go through as many hoops as I have to. If I am made aware of that, that's what I want. Tell me, this app has disabled screenshots by default. Are you really sure this is information you want to have a picture of available? Because, yes, yeah, sometimes I do. There are absolutely times when I need to send something to someone to, you know. It's the bank. It's the bank. There are times I need to send people pictures of my negative balances when they ask me for money and say, you first. <laughs> I know TikTok has a clear mode. Yeah. You can hide the UI so you can look at it in case there's stuff over where you're trying to look because people are dumb. And if you go to take a screenshot while that is up, 
it does prompt you and say, hey, if you're trying to take a screenshot, there's a better way to do this. Or if you're taking a screen, if you're taking a screenshot to share, you can share the whole link and like, do you want to add attribution at the bottom and stuff like that? Oh, I don't like that. I have run into that a lot and I don't like the fact that they can do it. It doesn't stop you. It doesn't stop you, but it says, hey, but it, it doesn't it doesn't pop up anything when you don't have clear mode on. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I th- I, it does. It, it it tells you it's like, hey, if you're trying to share it, just you can share it through the tab a lot easier. It doesn't let you do screen recording while clear mode is up. So you can't just bootleg somebody's video directly on your phone to save it as a thing. You can't you can't do screen recording while clear mode is up. You can do a screen record while the thing's on because their name will their name and stuff will be on there but you can't do it that's what it is facebook used to do that and they stopped where they would pop up a little box after you took your screenshot that says hey this is better shared why don't you just use the share button instead it's like i don't want to share it i'm taking a picture for me but it would get in the way of what you were doing and to the best of my knowledge the reddit app still does that and it pops a whole separate dialogue for it there's a reason for that, though. If you also if you right click and hit save, if you hit save on an image on a phone, it does not download the image you're looking at. It downloads a, a watermarked image that has the original uploader's name, like in a frame on the bottom, uploaded by slash Uber Fuzzy on slash Tech Gore or something. Yeah, it puts who and where on the image, like. It doesn't. It doesn't go over top of it. It goes outside in a frame, but it does save where it came from, which I kind of like, but I also don't. Yeah, I don't like that it enforces it on you. I'd like to have the option to save just the image because I want it for my references. I don't give a shit where it came from. I'm not sharing it. I'm not claiming it as my own. I want that 6K back. I think it only does it if you save the image. If you take a screenshot of what's on your screen, it doesn't. But this way you can't boot like the original full resolution image that may be bigger and it's scaled down as a yeah. blah, blah, blah. Which is dumb because you could just do that on the computer. They can't right. stop that. Right. It's only a phone thing. It's it's a hook like on on right click save or whatever. You know, do get this other image and they do it in line, which I know how that works because I used Yeah. Just like like the guardian thing that's how they do that reddit it's the same technology computers man oh oh yes can can we can we start a segment like that i i can't stop you i mean you're more than welcome to <laughs> we we should start the first the first hour of the show like this should be open whatever the second half should have a couple segments and we each get like a like an like a like a 10 minute soapbox whatever grind your gears angry ranting i could get with that i could get with that (sighs) well give it a little bit of thought here because we're gonna take a break for about 10 minutes i don't know about you but i need to go get like a water and a soda and a juice and a coffee and also (laughs) an ice pack so you guys make sure if you are in the greater cleveland metro area oh oh i love that bottle Oh, I love that bottle. I forgot I bought this. It was still in the box upstairs. If you're in the Midwest and underneath the heat stroke, you go take a few minutes and get yourself some ice and some water too. But we are going to take five, run a couple of ads, and then we will be back.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Blue House Bowl Session. We are glad to be back with you on this gorgeous Tuesday again. You know, the Wednesday-flavored Tuesday. Can I get some Jardis Tuesdays in chat? Uh, oh, there we go. There's the, there's the ice pack in a pillowcase behind me. That's what I wanted. That's perfect. Oh, that's helping. Oh, that's helping a lot. Amaya Rose, welcome. Hi. Did you win? Did you beat it? Did you get all the Chaos Gemeralds? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Amaya sings when she's not singing every once in a while, has started playing some video games. Uh, and we were, we were playing Sonic Adventure, right? That's, that, that's the one. That's the one that was oh, on, the, on, the, the, on the cube. I missed Amaya Gaming. You know, uh, you wouldn't have that problem if you were actively following, he joked. But I am going to give a shout out. If you're not following Amaya already, you really should be. Come hang out for the karaoke. Come hang out for the video games. Come hang out with one of the sweetest people. It is my pleasure to call friend because it's always a good time. Ah, She's been here, too. You guys remember that, right? She's going to be back here, too. It is, it is summer. Beekeeping season is officially over. We can have her back. She has some free time. Yeah. Come back and talk about gaming. So tell me, Fuzzy, what grinds your gears? Uh... Uh-oh, I put him on the spot. I just downright broke him. If you have a job to do, like you are being paid to do that job, you are providing a service. I don't care what it is. I don't care what level it is, whatever industry you're in. If you are doing that job and is providing something for somebody else, do that thing. That's it. That's all we ask of you. I, it, it doesn't have to be service with a smile. That's great if you don't provide the service. If I go to a fast food place and I order food and your job is to make that food and put it in the bag that I paid you money to do, put the things I buy in the bag. Your job is to stand there at the, at the window and take the drinks out of the cooler and put them in the bag and hand them to the person. That's your only, your job is to pass the butter. If you forget to pass the butter, get off the planet. I feel like there's some very important context I'm missing here, but I am, I am curious. I don't, within the last two years, because of echoes of the pandemic and the mass rehiring of new people into especially fast food jobs, it. The McDonald's nearest to me, right down the street, hired a lot, a lot of young people because a lot of the older people quit to go do other things and they rehired an entire young staff. And I get that. And I gave them a lot of leeway for that. A lot. I've never worked in fast food, but I understand it's hard. You're young. You don't have the experience. But if your job is to like one of your three job functions is to look at the list and say, hey, they ordered a drink and that drink is in the special cooler right here at the checkout window where, the, where they keep the little kids' milks and little kid juices and you take one out and you put it in the bag when it says they bought a juice and you can't do that one thing. Stop working there. Do anything else. All I want you to do is provide the service that I pay for. I'm paying way too much money. I'm paying the premium of going to fast food because I need something child drive through, blah, blah, blah. Like I, I understand. Oh, I could cook better at home for cheaper. Yes. And I know and I'm paying the premium. All I want is that premium. Do the thing that I am buying. If I, if I, 
at any level of scale, whether it's just not putting a drink in my bag for the children. If you forget my food, you know what? Sometimes I won't even care. But it's the it's the drink that came with my child's meal. Yeah. Put it in the bag. Make sure it's in there. Double check it. Double check the Happy Meals, people. Screw the Big Mac meals. Double check the Happy Meals to make sure all the parts are in there. Because every person has forgotten that does not have or operate or maintain small children because they will lose their shit when their Happy Meal toy isn't in there. That's what they want. They'll lose their shit when their drink isn't in there because they don't understand. They just, I want my drink for whatever reason. We had the opposite experience of that on Monday. I mean, we've, we've had that experience on a lot of other Mondays and granted most of the time we aren't feeding a kid every once in a while, Charlie will come with you, Chris jr. Uh, Um, this past Monday though, let me tell you about this past Monday. This is not a gear grinder. This is this is a good time. Uh, we we go out for dinner every Monday, and we take Aunt BJ with us, or Aunt BJ takes us. However the case may be, we'd been talking about it. I saw some marketing material promoting somewhere the Garfield menu at Olive Garden as a tie-in with the new Garfield movie. And I have not seen the new Garfield movie yet. It is on my list. I am very interested. But I got to tell you, their plan, their their gimmick, the Garfield menu at Olive Garden is you get the lasagna frita as the appetizer, the fried lasagna bites. Then you get the lasagna as your entree. Then you get the chocolate lasagna as dessert. Who oh boy, is that a lot of food? Oh, my me, that is a lot of food. But it was a fantastic combination. And we had the most friendly, accommodating, understanding, hardworking, dedicated server that it has ever been my pleasure to attend an Olive Garden. You're, you're, you're there. Olive Garden is fast food when you're craving pasta, okay? I, I'm not there for an authentic Italian experience. I'm there for Olive Garden. I know what I want. When I go to Taco Bell, I'm not going to say, this isn't how they make it south of the border. I don't care. I'm there for what I want, and that's Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm not at Olive Garden for the Taco Bell. I kind of went off on a metaphorical tangent there. If you're at Olive Garden for the Taco Bell, it, go home. You don't smoke too much. So good, though. So good. Amazing dinner. Exactly what I wanted. Way too much of it. I think after dinner Monday, I didn't eat anything until like 11 o'clock last night. I was, I was well overfed. I was well overfed. And boy, was I, I happy think, about it. I think, yeah, I didn't, eat, I didn't eat anything Tuesday morning. I was still stuffed. I think I had like the two hot dogs I went and made during one of my stream breaks. Yeah yesterday and that like just two little like just hot dogs that was it because i just like was not i mean part of the heat i just uh, i get a lot that. of water you're not as hungry but like i was like not hungry like oh i have not eaten anything today i need to eat my daily you know calories like no your body's just like you're good you get you're, you're, you're flush you, you we you're good a okay and even today i wasn't that hunger i think i had another two hot dogs at lunchtime before i started streaming and i'm i'm hungry now but it's you know nearing eight o'clock and i haven't really ate anything today but like i also haven't done anything today also it's been hot (laughs) yeah yeah i had hot dogs last night too i don't know what it is i'd been craving hot dogs so i bought myself a pack and a pack of buns I was going to make chili dogs, and I got a can of chi- uh, Skyline Chili because I love Skyline Chili on hot dogs. I love Skyline Chili in general. Usually they serve it over spaghetti. Turns out you can just buy the spaghetti and chili already together in the can by accident when you plan on buying just the chili. So Wait, 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 wait. The spaghetti is in the can yes the spaghetti and the chili are already in the can ready to go you just plop it out on a plate throw on cheese to taste and eat it 
Or it's not long strand noodles, is it? No, it's broken noodles. Oh, okay. It's, so it's, it's not it's, spaghetti O's, it's, sp- it's spaghetti eyes. Yes, it's it's broken spaghetti. Okay. But I accidentally got that instead of uh, just the chili. So last night, for a snack, I had some chili spaghetti dogs. <laughs> I, I, I'm not dissatisfied with them, but it it definitely was one of the things of all time. No, honestly, they were really good. Like, I'm so mad they closed all the Skyline Chili locations relatively close to here. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's an unreasonable drive now for a meal. I would still make it, but... In, in general, it is not a reasonable drive, and that frustrates me because it's one of my favorite foods. It's a comfort food for me. And now, like, the only real comfort food restaurant for me that, like, is one of my favorite things that is nearby is prohibitively expensive. Not that I let that stop me ever, but, uh, you know, I don't have a Skyline Chili where we can feed three people for $20. It looks like we have to go to the Brazilian Steakhouse now. Oh, no. Speaking of which, we should go out to the Brazilian Steakhouse. Jason. I might be secretly hoarding some Texas Day Brazil money. I'm just saying. That, okay, okay, you are, you are bureaucrat Conrad. You are technically correct, the best kind of correct. It is not prohibitively expensive. It is unreasonably expensive. It does not prohibit me from buying it, but it means that if I purchase it, I am not acting in a reasonable manner. There, I I, I offer that correction. I don't know if anything could prohibit me from going to Texas Day Brazil if it was within my capability whether or not it was a sound, sane, reasonable, and rational decision. Swords of meat. They bring swords of meat to the table. You know the old joke, how rare do you want your steak? Run the cow by and I'll cut off a slice. They do that. They bring it to you. And they just slice off meat for you. And you have meat on the plate. And then you eat until you get the meat sweats. Doesn't that sound so good? They put my favorite dish at that place back on the menu. Like, permanently. They they pulled a, the spicy picanha. The, oh. the, like, spicy garlic sirloin one. Yeah. It's like the spicy nuggets. They brought back the spicy nuggets at Wendy's and made them a permanent fixture on the menu. That made me happy. They brought back the spicy picanha at Texas Day Brazil because it used to be a seasonal item. They made it year-round and permanent. I was thrilled. I cannot express to you how thrilled I was by that. You can get takeout, you know? I keep thinking about that, too. Like, I could just get two pounds of that stuff pre-sliced and go get it and bring it home and eat it at home. I could do that. That is an option I have. I think it's just a little bit too far for them to deliver to me, but oh man, now I need to go check all the services. Maybe it's not too far for them to deliver to me. Hmm. 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 Uh, it's probably too late tonight, huh? Oh, I'm sure of that. Probably. Also, I ain't got no money. Point is, point is, point is, go eat the Trace lasagnas at Olive Garden. You won't not regret it, I assure you. That chocolate lasagna, though, we got to talk about that. Yes, yes, we do. I think it was too tall was the problem. Because it was... Three and a half, three and a half inches, four inches. A post-it note 
is three inch by three inch. It was about that size. I would say the problem taller, is yeah. no, 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 no. It, it, it was taller, but the problem is, is it, but it was the base was height. three it was by that, three. Yeah. Yes. But the problem is, is I think it was also three inches tall. Yeah. Because that looks about as tall. The pro, It was like three inch by three inch by three inch cube of chocolate in different densities. It was taller than a forkful. That is that is the key here. And I think that's where you're headed with this. Yeah, because if that's three inches and like I think it it was that tall and it should be this tall. I think it should have been flatter and not a cube. It, the problem was it was a cube of chocolate. And I think if it was more flatter like a lasagna, it would have been not as much to consume because I think it was just a little bit too much chocolate as a dessert. So as, as an entree, it would have been fine. It was the well, appropriate okay, amount the of chocolate for a, a for an entree for a main course. In much the same way that you, they have like a lot of the food, a lot of places, and I don't know about it. They have foods that you can get as an appetizer and you get a smaller portion of them yeah. as an appetizer. Or you can get, if I just, like, if I want chicken tenders as an appetizer, they're going to give you, like, two. If you get chicken tenders as a meal, you get, like, three or four. Oh. I think. Hold that thought. The cube we got. I'm going to interrupt you for just a second. Chicken ten, or chicken filet, fries, barbecue sauce, ranch. Tendies and fries. No. No. Come on. Don't anyway. Don't on me. Anyway. Look, I've held off on not, on not pitching an idea to you about that. I've had condiments optional. But that can, that, because that lays on the whole condiments. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, at, matching, matching the, the order because the way we're doing the order matching now and like, like, oh, can I get a hot dog with things? And the hot dog is always a hot dog, but you can add it based on their what they order. Right. Because we're matching hot dog because we're matching an exact grid. And it's like, Ugh. I know, but I just like every time I think stereotypical, fast, casual, Denny's, Perkins, Sherry's, uh, they bring you the condiments. They just bring them. They you use the one you like and they just bring them. Denny's doesn't. Pay they, attention next time we go. They, they used to. They, they used to. You. They used to. And it, it was a lot of food waste. Point is, that's why the recipe is chicken filet, fries, ranch, barbecue. It's just assumed that you get a cup of each with it. Yeah. If I had honey mustard, no, I'm not adding honey mustard. Point. Okay, back to the very beginning. Like you said... I don't know that I would say it's too much dessert or too much chocolate for a dessert. It's intended to be over the top and and extravagant. As an after meal dessert, I think it was too much mass. All of it was perfect. It was just too much mass. If you got it intentionally, I want this thing as dessert. I'm going to go have an appetizer. I'm going to have a drink while I'm hanging out. And then I want a dessert. Yes, I think it was perfect. I think it was too tall and too much mass as an after meal dessert. The too tall I will a hundred percent grant you because it was taller than one forkful. Yeah, it was just awkward to cut through. Yeah. You know, like, it's like when you get a slice of cake and it's upward like you can't eat it. If you stab you know? time first down into a piece of cake, the cake shouldn't be any taller than the entirety of the body of the fork up to the neck. And that was the problem I had with this. I think it was a perfect amount, but I am a well-known, very strong chocoholic. So I went you into it. You also didn't finish your meal. Yeah, it's true. I went in you planning on being a, gluttonous. Yeah. I went in with that intention and that knowledge beforehand. Olive Garden is expensive, too. A little bit. It got more expense. It's a, I think it's overpriced for what it is. It was okay enough before because at least it was 
moderately priced and moderate quality, you know? That's the problem with McDonald's right now. They're not cheap food anymore. But the quality hasn't increased accordingly. We were talking about um, potatoes. Yeah. What the hell happened with potatoes? Anybody out there? Was there a potato famine and we missed it? Why is everything based out of potatoes so goddamn expensive right now? Not even a whisper of a clue here, but I 100% believe something in the potato supply chain went horribly, horribly sideways because hash browns got more expensive and french fries got more expensive and all the potato-based things just went up in price. Yeah, it's not going to... God damn it. (laughs) Little one, $2.50, the little paper french fries. Oh, you mean the the dollar bag of fries. Yeah, the dollar bag of fries is $2.50 now. The large, the big one, four thirty nine. I'm 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 actively attempting to bite my tongue here because I don't want to start screaming about late stage capitalism, dystopian hellscape. Hold on, let me switch to breakfast. But man, oh man, hash browns, a single. Oh, I don't want. Oh, the the the, the 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 two for two, yeah. No, no, no. A single hash brown. How much do you think a hash brown is now? Well, one, one oval. Well, they were always two for two, so I'm assuming a dollar. Tell me, two fifty. Tell me how close I am. Two fifty. Oh, my stars and garters! That is terrible. Everything's expensive, and I hate it. I really do hate Where's it. there? I understand part of it is food costs have gone up. Okay? And I understand that some of it is inflation in general and food costs have gone up. But there's a limit for... It's hash brown. It is just potato in a different shape. It is a physical change. It is not a multi-step refining process to get to that object. Yeah. You took a potato, you made it into smaller bits, and then you pressed it back into a different shape. It's it's minimally transformative. Well, you know... And it's not even like a whole potato. At least you go somewhere like... Uh, like Penn Station and you order a thing of fries and they take a whole potato and they run it through and you get a whole potato worth of fries. This is a single hash brown. Yeah. Of which you could get two or three per potato. Goodness, I hope potatoes aren't like... No, no, no. Because remember, it's hash browns. You're not getting... It's not like the wood problem where you need solid, unbroken things. Right. Potatoes are spheroid things, so it's a volume problem. You get a lot more hash browns out of a single potato object than you realize. Well, I'm 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 going by that kind of size estimate. Maybe I don't know how big a potato is. <laughs> the, the 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 brand of the species of potato that McDonald's uses, they're not genetically modified. It's been a long time of breeding right. larger and larger varieties, and it's it's. What's what's the eugenics of potatoes? It's not modifying them. They're just it is, though. They literally take the potatoes like these ones are good. They burn them. They take the other ones and they plant them. It's potato. That's what they do. I I know, but that's a phrasing I would not choose for that person. Selective, selective, selective reading. reading. Okay, I could work with that one. That doesn't carry that's, that's wor- the connotations that. Yeah. The point is, the point is, please remind, well, actually, no, don't. I was going to say, remind me to put potato eugenics in the description on YouTube, but there's no faster path to demonetizations in a lifetime ban. Their apple pies are the same way. Yeah. A single apple pie is two fifty now. The two for a buck apple pies, yeah. Are now two fifty. 
two apple pies is 360. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't, That's just, that doesn't make economic sense either, unless... The thing is, with an apple pie, I get it. Because there's apple, there's sugar, there's all the other stuff. You had to make the filling. You also had to do all the stuff to make the crust and that weird split crust fold thing mold. I get it. There's a lot of stuff to make the bread and to make the filling and to put it together and to ship them. And I, I get that. That I'm willing to pay two fifty for a apple pie. It's high. All food is high right now. But I get that there's many steps involved to turn the apples into apple filling and dough components into dough and then bake the dough and turn them into an apple pie. I will pay 250 for that process so I don't have to do it. I understand that businesses are in business to make money. This is something we've talked about quite problem. a bit. But like yeah. Target recently announced that they were cutting prices on their grocery items to help people who might need help affording groceries like up to 30 percent in some cases what i hear is we've been overcharging for groceries by 30 percent for quite a while now yeah yeah that really bites into the argument of everything's expensive because of inflation it they're cutting it on their store brand things where they weren't paying. They already weren't paying an outside thing to stock it. You know, they have to make profit edge. They're cutting it off of their invisible profit edge. You okay? Fair. Yeah. I it had to go camera dark for a second. Okay. Just making sure you didn't like your computer melted. No, not yet. Despite my best efforts. Um, otherwise, yeah no they're they're cutting that 30 percent off of all their store owned brand things that they were just making basically pure profit off of yeah it's the same way with like amazon basics it's like you're not chart like they're not like taking it off of something another brand you know they're taking it off of the target brand which 30 you know yeah, I get it, but still, it's it's the communist it was, in me. It's the socialist. I don't know in if me. it was Target or Walmart. One of one of the two, and I'll, I'll ask Jeff if it's Walmart or not. They give a fairly not great employee discount, like on broad stuff, but they gave like a higher discount if it was the store brand stuff. Like it's only like five percent just as an employee discount. Yeah. But like, if you bought Walmart's great, what, value. great value, great value. Yeah. If you bought great value stuff, you got 25% off or something because it's coming out of their own prop. Like they're just taking less. Cause it's like, we're giving you a discount on our own money that you're handing back to us as an employee. Yeah. So yeah, we can give you a better discount on the thing that we're selling to you. Here is twenty dollars. If you're gonna give us back to us for our products that we're making profit on that you're stocking, yes, we can give you a better discount on that. You know. I can kind of get that. I don't know if I like it, but I can at least kind of understand it, you know. Well, at least in that case, you know where that profit is coming from. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's it makes sense, but yeah, all all brands are like that. Oh, it's now on sale. Like, no, it's not. They're it's not on sale it's they're taking less profit on it yeah anytime you see uh car dealerships do the same thing you know it's not like oh 500 rebates like no 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 no. it's not a discount they're just taking less profit that is not below the base that is below their profit markup it is not down here it is from here to here not from here to here. <laughs> anyway, Let's Cafe is going to be going on sale soon for eighty nine ninety nine. We'll just be be perpetually at eighty percent off. Be the change you want to see in the world. Nah, we're going to try and be reasonable with the pricing on the game. I promise. 
realistically, I really do think for what we're going in there and the stuff that we're going to be building and the stuff we are going to be adding post launch. Yeah. That we need to get it out the door. There's a lot of content. We are actively dividing into milestones of this is not going in at launch. Yes, this is going in, but it just takes more time and more assets and blah, blah, blah. We will be giving probably pretty significant free content updates, you know, over a couple months after of stuff that wasn't done at, you know, not like, oh, we're going to make you pay for the DLC that was what was going to be in the game. It just wasn't finished and we're going to charge you for it. No, it's going to be stuff we knew we couldn't finish and we didn't want to extend. Yeah, we don't want to prevent people from being able to play it is, is a, a big part of that, honestly. Yeah, I want to show it off. I'm, I'm, well, I mean, we are, but at the same time. So, Balatro Mahjong. <laughs> There's a version of Mahjong, and I don't know if it, I don't I don't don't even know if it's actually Mahjong. But I've seen it play with Mahjong tiles. Thank you for the bit. I see it. I see it on. <laughs> on our way to ten thousand. Um, I see it on TikTok as like ASMR videos. There's two sides and they have two sets of tiles and they're like, they like, there's one more, there's one less tile than either set and the first person to get their full set. But there's like one gap. So it's like, instead of like two blocks of 50, there's like 49 and 49. Yeah. But all they do is they put it at the top and it pushes down and then you have to hand the other person the tile and it's just whoever gets all of it. I'm like, that's not it. It's like playing war. It's like there's not even you're not doing anything. You're just popping one off and putting it where it goes. And it it's vertical. I'll, I'll, I'll find a screenshot. It's like one of those things like this is not a game. This is a mechanical operation. There's something to be said about those, though. Can do the same way if you think about it. No, there's still skill in. Hello. Thank you, Red. <laughs> she she went and threw, threw a dime in my channel, too. Aw, big blessings. Big blessings. You are too sweet for words. <laughs> now all the fuzzies um, alerts are going off. Yeah. But it's like, that's not a game that is literally just whoever got the not complete set at the start deal. Fair. Can do. You can choose where to put stuff. Okay. Okay. I can understand that then. So I, I want to write one entirely just to play with stack mechanics because I haven't did it. It's like one of the first things they teach you in, in programming. There's like certain bait. This is why you write solitaire so you can learn dragging and cart. You know, cards are the yeah. first way you teach stacks and objects and properties and blah, blah, blah. And then a stack and a queue and dealing and shuffle. Like a deck of cards is the perfect analogy to teach somebody a lot of object oriented and stacks and queue and a lot of programming mechanics because it's properties on there and a container and a container you can see. And this, like, Okay, this is how you do it. Go go look at every card game you know. Now write it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Everybody writes naively a card class at one point in time, and then you write, you know, a, a deck, which is a stack of cards, and you can shuffle and queue and do all the things and yeah. Capsulation, that's the word I was looking for. It is it is a pretty popular first principles project there, yeah. I will say that. And then you end up writing shoots and letters at four in the morning because you can't sleep. And then you end up writing modifiers that you can purchase by winning hands of poker. It, it leads places. I, I am just saying it leads places. I thought about, okay, my plan with that shoots and ladders game, A, is eventually get uh, multiplayer working for, by, by hook or by crook. Yeah. But also, 
it won't be a single dice roll. Because And the board will keep going. It's not just get to 100. It will keep going until certain goals are met, and it will slide down and move, move up and stuff. Yeah. What I plan to do is let you choose how many dice you want to roll. Because as soon as somebody discovers a warp, or there's a path here, now you because may all the shoots and letters are going to be hidden, yeah. you may want to, if you know... There's I'm only nothing four good away. I don't want to go 18 spaces. I right. like that. I like that. You'll have, you'll get two dice added to your dice pool every turn. You can choose how many you want to roll. If you only want to go one this time because you want to take a shorter hop because you're trying to get to somewhere, or you want to burn more to go a larger chunk, you can. Any dice? A full D uh, D and D no. set? Not any dice. Can I roll two twenties? You may also land on squares that upgrade your dice. Ooh. Oh, now that that's crafty. One one of your dice will always be a D six, just one to six. Your other dice may be minus three to plus three. Mm. Do you want to risk extra? you may land on a square that you can either take a warp a random warp to some other location or you can upgrade one of your dice permanently to a d8 oh this is this is vicious this this is why i wanted to write a shoots and ladders is it's not shoots and ladders which is a solved problem on a fixed board with a d6 and a known pattern it's i want to go full chaos goblin what can we add to this Oh, I am excited for this. I was to begin with, but this just keeps getting better and better. Yeah, I. Yeah. I am. I am going to keep keep my eyes open. I I try to make it to all your dev streams anyway, but I am going to keep my eyes open because I like where this is headed. I I need to get back to doing some of that. I am joking when I say. I'm going to remind you, remind you about uh, Hergel's right of first refusal clause. <laughs> All right. Um, I mean, that's I'm messing with you anyway. If you if, if you decide you want to bring it into the whatever, you're welcome to. If you don't, I can't stop you. I'm not going to try to whatever. I do think we should make sure we have one major team project going. Yeah. But I also think we need to start cranking out some more like actual just fun little time waster games to throw up on the site. Like, you know, what's on there now. Yeah. Like, yes, can do is a full thing. You, you sit and you play, but also you can just like, I want to kill 10 minutes and go play smart. Yeah. You can bop in and you can you bop know? out. Yeah. I want a quick little time waster game. That is a simple little mechanic. Yep. Yep. No, I a hundred percent agree. You know, no, no scores, no leaderboards, no stress. I just want to play the mechanic and zone out for a few minutes. We need more games like that. We need more things in the stable of just a reason to come by and see the branding and get it in your <laughs> Well, I have been going through all of my uh, Flash stuff, too. We need to pick some of those and redo those because those are quick and painless now. And if I can actually get into the source and see how I did it the first time around. Horse boarding? We'll, 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 Look, we'll negotiate. Okay. If we can, ha if we're going to maintain the gag section, we really should have the BJ comic games in their own little section. Not, not as mainline Hergulka things, but they should, we should pull them in there so people can play them in the state they were and just kind of patch out whatever URLs they were trying to hit or, or, yeah. or even just leave it and say, YOLO, we don't care. Yeah. Okay, just have it silent. Make sure it doesn't fail badly. I'm but, good with that. I'm good with that. But yeah, let people experience brain invaders and ho extreme horse boarding. And what was the other one? Well, we had the Pentomino one. Yeah. I think those. I mean, nobody will have any idea who these people are. But... Right. Right. I think those were the only ones we had on, on BDJ. I had a couple other Flash videos, but I think those were the only games we had up on the comic site. Or 
extreme horse boarding and brain invaders. Hold on, hold on. Back when I was just you... just getting into actually developing games in Flash. It was all just under Slash Flash, right? Yeah. Brain Invader, horse, old timey. Yeah, oh. that's the old timey cartoon. Pentamido. There's a piano one. That's the full cartoon, not the not just the me doing the bounce animation. That one's up on YouTube. Punch. That is where I'm singing Banana Phone and Jeff punches me in the stomach. Uh, Ragdoll. That was from Lisa's stuff. Because that was one of her characters. Man, oh man. Oh my God. Man, I wrote such a... We all do. Timestamp... The timestamp on the index.php I have here is September 2nd, 2007. Yeah. The little flash badge, little pixel art badge, is from 2004. Yeah. I think, uh, okay, the folder's from 2020, but yeah, these are all from last modified was 2004. Sounds about right. But also, I don't know. I also don't know how old this this dump is. I don't think it's the right one. That's back when everybody had badges that were 88 by 31. I will always remember that size. And now that size is small enough on a modern display that it looks like a, a ketchup stain from your french fries with the ketchup on them. And the mayo. And the honey mustard. Is that how big that is? 88 by 31. No, this, this one's 80 by 15. God, that's even smaller. Yeah, that's how big most of these are. It's tiny. Yeah, these are all 80 by 15. 80, that is... 88 by 31 was one of the badge sizes. 80 by 15 must have been just a little pin, pin whatever. Uh, this one's 114 by 43 was the, the bigger like button size. Oh, no, no, no. You're right. You're right. Most of these, these other bigger ones are 88 by 31. Oh, good. I was starting to think I was hallucinating that and that that number didn't have any significance. Oh, no, just one, one of these randomly is bigger. Yeah. 88 by 31. Unreal. Bitsy. Man, I miss having a I'm, website. No, I don't. I'm going to I'm going to take a picture and send it to you. Oh no. Oh no. Can I can I just take my entire desktop? Yes. Okay. That's Probably that's don't show this cuz I don't know what's I don't know what's in the background. Oh no worries. Yeah, d yeah, don't share this. Yeah. But I'm going to send it to you. You said how how small it was in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that yeah. is teeny, teeny, tiny. That is itsy, bitsy, bitsy, itsy, itsy. <laughs> teeny, tiny, weeny, small. Yeah, but remember, this from this this is from when websites like you designed your thing to not be bigger than like six forty because some people said six forty monitors and some people had eight hundred by six hundred monitors. Yeah, those were your two options. And People with the, the ten yeah. with, with the ten twenty four monitors were like, "What do you do with all that real real estate on your screen?" <laughs> oh, how far we've come over the years! I'm sitting. This one's fourteen forty. That one's fourteen forty, but it's vertical, and that's a four K TV. I'm pretty sure I actually have it at four K and not scaled. Yeah. Man. And I've got stuff all over it. So you say that now I feel like a caveman because I've got like 1080, 1080, 1050, which is that weird resolution we were talking about the other day. I told you, man, I'll, I'll bring you I'll bring you a monitor. 
I may well take you up on that. I may well take you up on that. I don't know what it would take to change your mount, but we need to get your your monitor in the middle bigger. Yeah. I, I really do. I also need to put it up higher. I need to figure out how to adjust that. This arm is a, a perfectly serviceable arm, but it is not a great arm with a bunch of adjustments and points of articulation. Also, make one, make one of your side monitors vertical. I've it been thinking about change, it. It will change the way you do everything, and it is for the better. Well, I've been thinking about it specifically. Music is what's been making me think about it. A vertical Lyrics? display will let me see like a sheet, a, a lead sheet in its entirety on the screen at one time and not yeah. scaled down. I think that will, will help a lot. Or just digging out my iPad and putting my stand on the piano. Something like that. So I'm not like leaning in and squinting at my middle monitor from way back here behind the piano. From way back here behind the piano. Blah. Yeah, these are 2560 by 1440. And the one over there is 1440 by 2560. And the big one actually is at 4K. It's 3840 by 2160. It actually is at 4K 100%. Nice. Nice. That'll make my pixel art look even crisper. I mean, it's the truth of things. I like scaled up, nearest neighbor, hard, no filtering pixel art. Mm -hmm. You've gathered that from everything I've ever made. Well, it's kind of trendy right now. It, it does actually work. It's an aesthetic I like, 100%. And it really is, for everything else, it really is the, the, the animals, the characters that make Let's Cafe. And it really is the items, the food that make Can Do. And mm -hmm. they lean into that look. And I, I love what we've gotten out of them from that. Blah. Nah, I agree. I agree. Did they announce Wand of Gamelon for the uh, CDI at the Direct? <sighs> Did I tell you about my terrible okay. idea? I want to remake... They... You first. Do you... Okay. If we lived in a perfect universe, in a vacuum, blah, 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 and all the licensing just wasn't a goddamn landmine nightmare... Could you imagine the insanity and the uproar in the Zelda community? Because everybody always poo poos on the CDI games that they're not really canon because, like, the CDI didn't really count and, like, that was all just a weird fever dream. And we just don't count those. Yeah. If they came out and just, just wrapped in a emulator all three games with a basic menu and stuck it on NSO and said, okay, they're for real. You yeah. can play them in all their horrible glory. We're not going to update them. They are as bad as they were in the CDI. We're just going to like wrap a disc system around it so we can store it in your in your Nintendo cloud save and put the CDI games on NSO. I said, can only They're actual imagine. real games now. Oh my god! Because people like Jiggy wouldn't have to say, "Well, it's like it's hard to run them because you can't the CDI emulator. It's all crap." It's like, no, 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 you can now. You don't have an excuse. Yep. Yep. What, what were you going to say? Uh, I have been challenged by someone, and I don't know if I'm going to take them up on this, but I'm the thought won't leave my head of rewriting uh, Wand of Gamelon for the Virtual Boy. Because there was no Zelda no! title on the Virtual Boy. There wasn't. Anything on the Virtual Boy. It was a horrible experience. They had at least a Mario Mar Mario game, you know. But they did not have a Zelda title of any form. So you know sometimes Nintendo comes out of like a weird left field with things when they came out with that iOS Mario yeah, Temple Mar Run Mar Mar thing? Yeah. Yeah. Could you imagine if they, for the 
iPad. Well, no, not iPad. The Apple. The Apple goggles. Yeah. What are what are they called? App Vision thing. If they came out with an actual Nintendo first party app, and it was a packaged Virtual Boy emulator, no 3D, just rendered as you know, like deinterlace it to make it 2D flat. Or no, actually, no, no, you could. You could emulate the 3D on you that. You could do the got... 3D, and you wouldn't have to do a black background. You could use the Vision's AR stuff, darken mm -hmm. your view, but the game's playing in yeah. front of what's going on around you. But to come full circle, what is it, 30 years later, and have Virtual Boy on actual 3D, for real, face mask goggles, and just a bundle of the Virtual Boy games. Virtual, Virtual Boy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. it... And I'm, then do I'm some weird it. special collaboration with Nintendo and make a red, a, a Nintendo red colored version of, uh, oh man, <laughs> of the Apple Vision. How many of those would they sell? I, like gold they could make them hot five takes. grand. They could make them five grand a piece, and they would sell. Yeah, they and would it, and sell it, and it out. Came bundled with, if it came bundled with the virtual boy, like pre install just came with it as an app. Yeah. You, you got it. It came with it on there, but you also got a key to add it to your account permanently. They would, they would sell. They, they wouldn't be able to keep them hundred percent. They, they would just be gone. I do kind of secretly want to write a virtual boy game. Maybe not a Zelda. What are you going to play it on, Jason? An emulator until I get a chance to get hardware and a flash cart that fits it. But I'm still intrigued. No. It's, you it's have a, other projects to finish before that. I don't mean now. I just mean in general. I've been looking at the homebrew oh, and I'm general. like, this would be a fun project eventually. I've done enough retro hardware game stuff. That would be an interesting one to put on my list. Hey, I made a Virtual Boy game, you know? They had Tellero Boxer. Yep. That was like Punch-Out. I keep saying I want to write a multiplayer online Punch-Out. I know I've been kicking that one around forever. I don't want a realistic boxing game. I want a multiplayer online punch out i want comically over the top characters that you pick from with signature moves but it's not little mac beats 16 guys you know if you want to be uh uh vodka drunkensky from the arcade one versus nick bruiser from super punch out you can do it that's what i want okay okay the meme joke always is would you rather fight 100 horse-sized ducks versus you know yeah Punch out 99. Ooh. Hmm. One big guy in the middle. Every, just like, like a Pokemon raid, but everybody's like in the ring around it, but you're tiny little, like, or like the, like the toads versus like one Godzilla size, you know, Bowser versus like a hundred thousand toads, you know, but your point of, you're all in the ring at different points of view. Everybody sees, wherever you're at and you're fighting to get up the front and do your attacks and you get knocked back. He just like smacks into a whole bunch of people go flying. But you only have like three hit points and then you're out. You're describing an MMO raid, you know, just with padded gloves. I love it. That is not a criticism. I love kind the idea. Of. But that is exactly what you're describing. But not like, oh, you get raised. Like you only get, you only take a couple hits. You can try to dodge, but you get knocked out like yeah. battle royale cell fairly quickly. You can jump back in, but you are a different character, you know, different whatever like things. But you can like one minute timeout, and then you can jump back in. But it's can you swarm the one big bad yeah. faster than he can just take everybody out? Oh, that's unbelievable, and I love it. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> All right. My ice pack is melted. My beverages are empty. So I think we are going to call it for this evening. Uh, let's see who's hanging around. Who do we want to go hang out with? Uh, 
beep dee. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us today. I really do. I have had a lot of fun with this. It has helped take my mind off a handful of things. Uh, I think... Ooh, I could go raid Uber Fuzzy. <laughs> no. No. I'm going to go watch Jiggy, but you know who else I'm going to go watch? I'm going to go watch Ice Blue. Let's let's go shower some love on Ice Blue. They have more than earned it. Um, mm-hmm. I can't I can't say a thing, but I am supporting them in many other things. So we're going to go uh, shower some love over on Ice Blue. Thank you all for hanging out. Make sure that you are a member of the Discord. Uh, let me do, 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 put the command in here. If you want to see what I'm up to and going, you know, doing, go, go look over there. Uh, I'm going to try and be doing some dev streams and cafe streams coming up here shortly. Fuzzy's going to be doing his thing. Make sure you're watching him as well. And until next I'm gonna be time, playing, I'm going to be playing more TOTK tonight. I am into it. I will be there too. See you later.